Hey guys, we're back. I'm Gene Dalsala, president of Audiholics, and today we have... Hugo Rivera, vice president of marketing. Gene, how are you today, man? Always good, my friend. Always good. When we're shooting videos, I'm happy. We're getting out the information to our peeps. It's, it's a great, great day. Absolutely. Love educating people out there, you know? Absolutely. Well, today we're going to educate on some calibration techniques. How do we calibrate? you know, uh, channels properly. Yeah, you know, this is a problem I see in a lot of people when they set up home theaters is they don't get the channel trims right. Mm -hmm. You know, one speaker's playing louder than the other and it just, it doesn't sound balanced. So, you know, luckily the one thing that auto EQ does or auto setup does really well, if you put the mic in your primary listening position, it'll set your channel trims pretty accurately. I mean, I've tested, you know, all the major brands and they all get it within a half a dB. Not bad. Uh, yeah, it is good, and that's a good starting point. So if you're gonna, if you really want to get your channel trims at least in the ballpark, with everything else, even your delays, use your auto setup, put it in the primary position, run the calibration, then turn off the auto EQ. Mm -hmm. Okay, exactly. then you're pretty much there in terms of getting your channel trims. Or if you're old school, then you got to pick up your little. SPL meter, and this is a Radio Shack. Radio Shack doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> but you can get it on Amazon. Um, I like the analog meters if you could find them just because I like seeing the needle and a lot of the digital displays, you know, they bounce around. They're not very accurate. They're getting better, but I still prefer the analog. What you do is you want to set it on slow response, C weighted, okay? This is the response you want to use. Then you want to use the test tones of your AV receiver to get the pink noise tones going to each speaker. Now, a lot of people, when they use the, the SPL meter, they'll just point it anywhere, or they'll just point it down, point it sideways. You don't want to do that. It's better to put it on a tripod. That's why you have the little hole here. You can actually mount it on a tripod. But you want to face the microphone up towards the ceiling. You want to place this meter at ear level at your primary listening position. You don't want to sit there and measure it like this because <laughs> your body's going to interfere. Right. You're, going to get, you're going to throw off your results. You don't want to put it up against the couch or a surface. You know, a lot of people have home theater seating. If you put it too close to that seat, that back of that seat is going to absorb the sound from the surround channel and it's going to give you a wrong reading when you go to measure that speaker. So it's best, you know, if you want, if you have to put it at arm's length, stand over away and, and do it like that and measure each speaker and get each speaker, you know, calibrated within the same level. You know, typically you would do it at 75 dB that's kind of the reference. So if you if you calibrate your system to 75 dB, you could be at reference levels when you're watching movies. Mm -hmm. so usually that's too loud. You might want to turn it down when you do that. But I I do a, a little variance on it. I like to turn the center channel up about a half a dB or a dB, usually a dB. I turn my center channel one dB hot just because I like to hear more vocals, you know, during the movies and stuff. Because movies are very dynamic. Yeah. And sometimes you need a little boost on the center channel. I'd rather oh, yeah. have, I'd rather hear the voices more than less when mm -hmm. I'm watching a movie. Agreed. So I would turn the center channel up a dB personally. And then the subwoofer levels, you don't need to have the subwoofer levels the exact same level as the rest of the speakers. Especially if you're using multiple subs and you EQ your subs so they're reasonably flat, you could turn that subwoofer trim up three or four dB or to your taste. You know, I've generally, and research has shown that we generally like a rise in bass as frequency goes down. Mm -hmm. You don't want a flat ruler from 20 to 20 yeah. kilohertz because that's not a, a pleasurable listening experience. And you don't want oscillation either. You don't want oscillation, that's why you want to use multiple mm -hmm. subs. Exactly, exactly. So. Interesting, Gene. I've heard a myth, and you and I both know that, that this is a myth, that you can get actually perfect listening in all of your seats. The only way you're going to get channel trims perfectly calibrated in every seat, there's two scenarios. If you're in a large theater where you have like a row of speakers on the side walls and the back walls, you have speaker coverage around the whole area, then you can get seat to seat consistency in all the channel, tr you know, on, on mm -hmm. all the speakers. Yeah, that's possible. But in a small room where you only have a pair or two pairs of surround speakers, you're not going to get each seat to have consistent levels unless you have separate calibrations for each seat. Understood. Okay, it's just not possible. You're always going to have really a sweet spot. Now, I have two rows in my theater room. So what I do is I measure the primary seat in the front row. I, I do the channel trims. I put it in a little table. You could draw a little table if you want. Then I go to the secondary sweet spot seat in the second row, and I measure there. And I kind of do like a best fits. Mm -hmm. So what I find is I 
I measure, what I do is I generally set the channel trims for my side and back channels a dB or two low when I'm measuring them in the, backs, in the back row. And again, the center channel, I set it up a dB hot, so that way you can actually still hear the center channel in the back row, but it's not overpowering in the front row. I'd rather have the surround channels a little bit low than a little bit high, especially if you sit in the back row and you're closer to a surround speaker. You don't want to localize that. If you have your surrounds turned up too high, you're going to localize to that sound source. Right. So the closer you are to a speaker, the better it is to have that a dB or two lower mm -hmm. than to have it all equal, if you have to, mm -hmm. and if you have multiple seats. Awesome. Awesome. You heard it here, people. That is a great explanation, Gene. Thank you, because there's a lot of confusion about that. It is. It's, it, you know, it's tough. There's always compromises to make, and just realize when you set the channel trims with the mic at one position, it's really optimized for only that one position. Awesome. Well, I think that covers it, Gene, and since this is one of our shorter videos, we better go ahead and just kind of like cut it right here. <laughs> Absolutely. But uh, you know what? Let us know what you think, guys. You know, if you like uh, these shorter videos, let us know uh, below. Let us know what you think also about uh, your calibration techniques. What are you doing to go ahead and calibrate on your end? And also click like on this video if you liked it. Share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done that already so you get our weekly videos. Until next time. Keep, Keep listening. listening.